me go ahead and get started. Uh, for our, our new media that are joining us, once again, welcome to Frisco, Texas in the 2024 NCAA uh, football Championship. I'm Jim Powers, and I'll be your moderator for all the press conferences this weekend. Joining us now, a team that we haven't seen in a little bit here in the National Championship game from Montana, their head coach, Bobby Houck, joins us. And, Coach, congratulations on a terrific year. We'll let you get started with opening comments. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate uh, the help. Um, and I guess I'll just start with that. We uh, really appreciate all the, the great treatment we've had here in Frisco and, and the hospitality, everything from – getting to the hotel and getting welcome to uh, um, just uh, how welcome everybody that's associated with running this game here at uh, Toyota Stadium has been. And then uh, I congratulate South Dakota State, Coach Rogers and, and the crew have done just a, uh, a great job. What a terrific uh, run up to this game. Um, unbelievable job this season by them. And uh, it's a, uh, privilege for us to be here and have a chance to to compete in the game against them so um with that i like our team we've done a nice job we've worked hard um i think our guys are uh, uh looking forward to to the game on sunday and and uh, hopefully we have a good performance because we're going to need that to compete with south dakota state thank you so much coach okay we'll go just like we did this morning uh we'll have the microphones being passed around uh, once again, if you have a question, raise your hand and start off with your name and affiliation. We do have folks on Zoom that are tuning in this, uh, this afternoon. So any folks on Zoom that have a question, please raise your hand and we will get to you as soon as we can. So we'll start off right here. Craig, lead us off. Coach Craig Haley from Stats Perform. Hey, Craig. Hi. Um, you've talked about some of the terrific things your, your team has done throughout the year. What, what's the one aspect that your team has really done best in your eyes? Well, I think you know we've had we've been good enough in certain aspects of this to uh, to be here in in the past couple of years, but haven't been able to do it. So I'd say the number one thing we've done is stay healthy, and uh, not that we haven't had any injury or lost uh, guys, but we haven't lost multiple people at the same position and wound up decimated. Uh, that's probably the best thing we've done. Uh, the other thing we've done well is is we've uh, played. I hate the term complimentary football, but we've done that. We've played well in all three phases. After uh, September, you, you had some close games, and, and then you had a loss at Northern Arizona. When you started to get on a roll, what what did you see in your players that just was so refreshing that maybe was a burden earlier on when you weren't playing as well as you could? Well, first of all, the goal isn't to play your best football in, on September 1st. Uh, the goal is to improve through the season, and I think we just kind of personify what happens when you stick with things and you keep working and you you persist. We'll go ahead here on the left, second row. Sean Radio, SWX Montana. Uh, Coach, heard a lot about you, Sean. Not much good. <laughs> Knew that was going to come. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you said obviously you love the, the you know this long break in between to to game plan and stuff. Now that you've been down here and been able to kind of experience kind of the lead up to it. How much uh, have you been able to appreciate that? And then also maybe do you think you'd appreciate it as much now being kind of an, an older uh, veteran coach than maybe if you came you know, earlier? <laughs> Just had to throw the age thing in there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> True. Uh, well, you know, this has been great for our guys. This is a bowl trip uh, to a degree where you can come down to the bowl site and the game site and uh, – you know, continue to prepare and enjoy the camaraderie and get acclimated to the surroundings. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So I think that's been that's been terrific for our guys. Um, you distracted me with calling me old, um, but you know, it's it's a different preparation for us. You know, K Kent and I were just talking about it. We used to uh, when we used to have to do this. Um, a lot of times we play on Saturday like the James Madison game, I think we played on Saturday. I'd fly all the way back across the country. And then, we'd, like, I would leave the game, uh, stop by the the tailgate, say hi to my wife, and then go in and start watching film, have a Monday practice on Sunday, Tuesday practice on Monday, and then get on a plane and go play the game on Friday um, in Chattanooga. So, you know, we didn't have uh, great ability to prepare much time to do that, and this has been a lot more smooth for us in that regard. 
Okay, let's go over on the right, first row. Hey, Bobby, Greg Rakoch from MTN Sports. Um, this is your fourth time here as a head coach. Um, the, the previous three did not go the way you wanted them to. Um, what are your thoughts on being back, you know, and just maybe how you're approaching this game versus those other three? Well, so I won't be redundant on the preparation, okay? I mean, that's that's different, certainly. Um, I mean, you, you play every game to win. Um, you know, each game plan's different. Uh, the, this this lead up and the prep, as I mentioned, is completely different than those games. But uh, yeah, I mean, you know, when you get to this game, uh, the team, as I mentioned when I first sat down, the team on the other side is always good, and uh, you have to go as simple as it may sound. You know, both teams are good football teams. You have to go play well to win the game. If you don't play well, there's no way you're going to win it. Um, so you have to go play well and and get a couple of breaks, and that's the way it goes. I mean, the, the team we're playing is 128 straight. Um, they're awfully good. Let's. Oh, you have follow-up? Go ahead. Follow up. Um, is legacy anything that you think about in terms of your coaching career at the university, and how much would it mean maybe for you to, to come away with a win on Sunday? Yeah, I, I, to, to contradict Sean, legacy's for old guys, and I'm not there yet. <laughs> Okay, we'll come here to the left, first row. Hey, Bobby. <clears throat> Frank Agola with the Missoulian newspaper. Um, can you speak to the late Don Reed, just the impact he made on you in your coaching career, and then how would you describe the impact he made into launching the Montana Grizzlies into the type of program they've become now? You bet, Frank. Thanks for bringing that up. I was going to touch on that at the end if somebody didn't, so thank you. Uh, you know, obviously, Coach Reed passed, um, I think, well, pretty much while we were in the air coming down here. And he had a, Coach Reed had an unbelievable impact on, on a lot of people. Um, just a, a truly uh, great man and a, and a great guy. Uh, he got me going in coaching, uh, along with several guys on our staff. Um, just a, a wonderful human being. And, uh, you know, I... I think that uh, for him to be as uh, beloved by uh, the percentage of his former players that he is um, is just phenomenal and speaks volumes to who he is. But he Don had a major impact on the University of Montana, the football program, the university in the state of Montana, and you know obviously he. Uh, I think that uh, that was a life well lived, and I think he did exactly what he wanted to do at, at uh, the pace he wanted to do it. We'll keep it here on the left-hand side, third row. Coach Zach Ward with the Dakota News now at Sioux Falls. Uh, I heard you last week mention you, you sat a little bit with John Stiglmeyer last year after he won the uh, national title. Obviously, he invested a lot of time in that program and kind of got over and, and won that title a year ago. Being in a similar position to him this year, what did that conversation kind of mean to you a year ago, and, and how does that kind of inform things maybe this year as you're in a similar position to, to where he is knowing those sticks again, way older than me now. All right, I mean, for God's sakes, I gotta look you in a mirror over there or something. I'm, you know, these bright lights make you look. They show all the flaws. But uh, you know, Stig, uh, Coach Stig is a is a is a friend. Um, known each other for quite a while. Uh, you know, got to got to do battle looking across the field at him a few times and. You know, the, the 2009 team that had us way down in the playoffs was probably good enough to win it. I think that, uh, you know, there's only, you only get a few – back to Greg's point, you only get a few bites at this apple, and I was obviously um, thrilled for him to get that that uh, victory in his last game at, at South Dakota State last year. And it's just a little bit ironic that uh, um, the next night the – the FBS championship games on and Stacy and I sat and watched it with him and had dinner with him and got a chance to, you know, uh, enjoy the, enjoy it and tell him what a great job we thought he did. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he, you know, it's, it's a unique thing. I mean, I, I don't know the exact number of years, but I think he was 30 some consecutive years at South Dakota state. I mean, that's just phenomenal. The commitment he had to that university and the program and, you know, seeing it through transition and, um, up a division and then culminating it with a 
with the FCS Division One championship was just a good way to go. A lot like uh, Don Reed, who I just spoke of. We'll keep it here, left side, front row. Go ahead. Um, Coach Gene Cummins, the Athletic, and FCSNationRadio.com. Um, Hi, Gene. I spoke with Alex Gubner, and he was like adamant about staying in the moment and 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 being purposeful about making every day count and every week. And he pointed to the Northern Arizona um, loss as kind of like a reset for you guys and, and really being purposeful about the way you prepare every single day to go out there. Is that something that was kind of like a mantra for you after that game? Or was that just something that the players kind of, you know, decided that they really needed to lock in there? Well, you know, it's, it, it's, Coaching your plan one on one probably where you only have one game each week. You can't if you uh, start worrying about another one, you get a chance to get beat. And I'm not saying that that's what happened down at uh, Flagstaff because they just beat us and they did a good job. But uh, you have one game a week. It's the biggest game. Our our opinion is it's the biggest game in the country because it's the one we're playing in, and that's how we approach it each week every year. And uh, you know sometimes you accomplish that a little better than others. We'll go over on the right side, front row. Go ahead. Kyle Hansen, Montana Television Network. And Coach, you, the players have touched on this sometimes this year, but you guys have beaten teams this year that you lost to last year. You mentioned the health, Sacramento State, Montana State, North Dakota State. Have you viewed this year as a little bit of a revenge tour, kind of getting back on that track at all? Yeah, that's kind of not really for me. Um, we're just, every team's different. You know, our team's different. Their team's different. The the lead up to it's different. Um, you can, make a big deal out of that we we could i shouldn't say we could make a big deal out of that but that all goes out the window about the second play so you got to go focus in on the assignment and and uh executing that's what we've done i think before we get to our next question just a reminder to those that are to, that are joining us via zoom if you have a question please use the raise your hand and we'll call on you here in a moment let's keep it over on the right hand side third row grant sweeter kell land sports out of sioux falls um, Coach, you kind of touched on it a little bit about uh, SDSU. You, you said they're a good team, very open-ended question. You know, what are some things that you see that, that make them as good as they have been? Well, they're veteran. You know, obviously, they've. I mentioned that that uh, South Dakota State has 28 in a row, unless my number's wrong, but I think I'm right on. Um, you don't get to that point without being really good at everything. So the team doesn't have a – have flaws you know they have I mean some of their players are better than some of their others and every every team has positions that are stronger from the NFL on down but they've got a lot of returning starters from a team that did this a year ago um they haven't really had any many close games or any close games um they just kind of dominated everybody I think that's probably what they expected coming into the season knowing what they had coming back I think they're really uh um, into the detail of what they're doing. Everything, everybody that I, I mean, I've, we've had three weeks, so I've watched a lot of them offense, defense, kicking. I think everybody has an understanding of what they're trying to accomplish schematically. Uh, they know what the guy to the right and the left of them are doing. And then they, they play hard, physical. I mean, they, they do things that, uh, you know, we kind of espouse ourselves and admire in, in football teams. They, they do it. We'll keep it over on the right side. Second row. <clears throat> Bobby, it's Fritz Neighbor from the D. Leonard Lake in Montana. Um, if I can swing it back to Don Reed just for a moment. Sure. He had a list of seven things that he kept off on his office wall. I never took a photo of it, so I'm paraphrasing. But one of them was about special teams winning at least one game a year. I wonder if you remember that. Two games a year. Two games a year. See, I was wrong. It's in our special teams book. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've plagiarized a whole bunch from Don over the years. So. <laughs> that was kind of my question of, You've kind of made a mark as a special teams coach as well as being a head coach. Is it thanks to Don Reed? Is it in spite of? Um, you know, I always kind of avoided it when I was around Coach Reed, just because I, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't interested in it. And then when I went to UCLA, Coach Donahue wrote me in, and that's where I kind of got going on it. Um, I used to run the other direction when Coach Reed would come. I should have listened. I, he put, I put me. My uh, attitude about it put me three years behind, so or two. And, but and the, yeah, coach emphasized it. Obviously, that was his. It was his thing, and I think I always took it from coach that 
you know, it was, he, he really truly believed it was a third of the game. And to follow up, South Dakota State, we've talked about the quarterback and their defense, but their special teams, including a pretty dynamic punt returner, seem like a tough task. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, and it, it's going to be redundant to what I just uh, just talked about. But they're they're good in all three phases, <clears throat> meaning they're really good in the kicking game. They, they just they play well week in week out. Um, again, everything they do is hard to pick apart in terms of trying to find a hole or some to take advantage of. Um, they just they just don't give up much, and they and they take a lot in the return game. And uh, you know it's a we got problems everywhere when we look at these guys trying to game plan them, and the kicking game's one of those. Keep it over on the right side, front row this time. Jay Cohn, MTN News and Sports. Bobby, good to see you. Jay, good to see you, man. I didn't see you sneak in there. Um, at the start of the season, you shuffled your coaching staff a little, gave everyone new uh, responsibilities. That turned out pretty good. It's even better than you thought it might. Well, I, you know, I'll go back to front on that, Jay. I, I don't think that. I mean, I don't think anything ever turns out better than you thought it might or else you wouldn't have done it, right? So you do things because you think they're going to be highly productive or else you don't do it, you do something else. Um, but I do, <clears throat> you know, you and I have talked about this earlier in the year. We have everybody, I think, Justin Green, coach in a different phase or position what we're doing. Uh, I think it's worked out obviously well. We're sitting here with whatever, 13, 14 wins, whatever it is. Um so that's that's been good. I think it speaks volumes to how our staff is, how they're receptive to doing different things. And, you know, it goes back to my response to Fritz on the special teams question or Coach Reed. I mean, you take things. This is something that uh, years and years ago when I was an assistant at Colorado, I got to talk to Joe Paterno about some head coaching things. And uh, Coach Paterno did they never had much turnover on their staff for a long period of time and and he uh would shuffle guys offense to defense and position to position and said it was really productive and i kind of memory banked that in the in the 90s quick follow up if i could uh wayne hogan wrote a great piece about the interview he called it when uh, I'm, I'm sure you uh, read that article um, what's your memory of that interview, which you said still stands out as one of the greatest interviews he's conducted? Oh, when I interviewed with those guys for the job exactly. the first time? Yeah. I owe Hogan a phone call. I need to call him. Um, you know, I, it was, it's kind of funny. My, my, my memory of that is kind of foggy because we were actually in, I was in, back in those days, you had to recruit, you had bowl, you'd come in, you'd have recruiting visits on the weekend and bowl practice. And then, those guys showed up on like we had a big recruiting weekend going on. I'd been on the road for two weeks. We had practice that day, and um, and then I had to go meet those guys at the Marriott in Seattle. And and I was kind of shocked when he and I talked about it afterwards. They they thought I was totally prepared. I thought I was wholly unprepared at the time. So I don't know whatever I did clicked because they hired me. Grateful for that, of course. <laughs> Let's go on the left-hand side, back row. Coach Lucas, um, FCS Nation Radio. Where are you, Luke? There you go. Nation Radio. Um, you know, from your run in the 2000s to now, to get back to this stage, how much have you had to change your coaching philosophies um, in the way kids like to be recruited and concepts or um, to stay relevant in the way college football has changed? Or have you always kind of done things one way and um, just had success? Well, I would, I would never say there's – We've ever done things one way. I think that we have always adapted uh, and evolved, whether it's scheme or recruiting or, you know, practice habits or training or whatever. You know, I think everything evolves and everything adapts, and I don't think there's any way you can survive long term, meaning in our business long term is probably two years. But I don't I don't think there's any way you can survive long term without adapting. Um to me, recruiting's become way easier. You get more information. The, recru- the rules are loosened up, so you have more contact with kids. Um, they don't talk anymore, so you, all you have to do is send them a direct message or something, and that's called communicating. So it's beca- that's become less cumbersome. Um, so yeah, I, I, we've just we've evolved. I mean, every every everything we do is evolutionary, and and we'll change stuff this off season. We have time for one more left side back row. 
Coach, uh, this is the third straight year that the participants in this title game have come from the Dakotas and Montana. Obviously, every other level, we've kind of seen a little more diversification, but it seems like between these states, there's a lot, pretty hot competition right now. What do you think it is about these states that seems to be breeding such a high level of football and championship quality football right now in this particular window of time? Well, I think it starts with the university wanting to support the programs. I think they're all they're all universities that uh, view football as important and a priority, and so the universities support the programs, which gets you a, a foot in the door. Now you have to go execute it. So then, if you if you look at it, the, the coaching staffs are exemplary. They know what they're doing, and then uh, you know they all have, they all have a. A common denominator, and it's kind of back to Lucas's question: what, what do all those teams that have been in this game the last few years have in common? They're tough, physical, disciplined football teams. Outstanding, Coach. Well, thank you very much. We wish you the best of luck this uh, coming Sunday. All right, go Green. It's good to see everybody. For the media, for the media, here's who we have upstairs, and you have uh, player access upstairs for twenty five.